So one, one day I was driving the car with him and I asked him, can you please just tell me what the secret is? And he just turns around and tells me, shy boys get no candy. And it kind of just resonates with me so much. If you want to start something new, don't be afraid and just go for it. Hello guys, my name is Scott, aka Trading Lords. And all different platforms you can find me under the handle Trading Lords. Uh, I'm a crypto investor, trader, and uh, overall kind of influence, lifestyle influencer, I would say. Uh, it's more about just how to kind of balance life in between trading. So uh, make sure to check uh, my channels out if you want to. Shy boys get no candy is an expression that we came up with this summer. Uh, I was just talking to a friend of mine who is not the best looking guy in the world, if we're very honest, but he always somehow manages to get the most beautiful girls that I've seen in my life. So one, one day I was driving the car with him and I asked him, can you please just tell me what the secret is? And he just turns around and tells me, shy boys get no candy. And it kind of just resonates with me so much because I was sometimes I'm just too afraid to ask stuff or too afraid to do things. And now at this point, I just always think about, you know, when we were little and you went trick or treating, for example, the shy kid that didn't ask for candy didn't get some, but there was always one or two bold, blunt kids that just asked for the thing that they wanted and they got it. Shy boys get no candy also relates to crypto in a sense because there's always many, many risks involved. Obviously, you have to be very careful with what you invest in and always do your due diligence, but sometimes people are just too afraid to take that first step and put their feet into the water at first. If you want to start something new, don't be afraid and just go for it. First of all, thank you so much for Vibit for just having my back. They've been very nice to me. Uh, I'm an affiliate of them and I'm very proud to be so and I hope for, hopefully we can continue to work together in the future. Crypto Fight Night was just absolutely a surreal experience. There were so many people, so many new faces, so many different kind of emotions that I felt during those eight minutes of pure war, four times two rounds. Uh, I loved every second of it and I hope that next year there's the chance that I can repeat and defend my title. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. I didn't practice too much the whole clinching thing. So, because he came from a pure boxing gym. I come from a kickboxing Muay Thai gym, which is different. He was very well aware of how to react during those clinches. So he gave me a couple, couple dirty shots left and right, but I was still comfortable with it. But then again, it was the third round. I was extremely tired. It was all about the mental performance at that point because both of our bodies were not used to it. The adrenaline dump already occurred. So both of us, the hands were so heavy. The shoulders were barely work, 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 working. But yeah, we had no choice. We had to continue to, to fight. It is now pretty interesting to see myself here after all those months of hard work to kind of like realize the dream and see it in reality. It's pretty cool. For everyone who might be interested in participating next year in the next Crypto Fight Night, because I'm pretty sure there's going to be one because this one was a huge success, just go for it. Don't be shy. I mean, it helped me a lot, health-wise, mental, clarity-wise. This was probably the greatest six months of my life and the past 72 hours have been unreal. Whoever gets the opportunity to compete, I can just, from the bottom of my heart, tell you, do so. I think it was mid-2016 when there was a guy in my school and uh, at one point we got into a conversation and he started mentioning crypto and Bitcoin. And at that time, in 2016, crypto was not that well known and most people literally had zero idea what Bitcoin even was. And uh, I just started my first business, so I thought that I would be, you know, like well educated when it comes to finances and whatnot. And then he just asked me the simple question, what do you think about Bitcoin? And I responded, I don't know what Bitcoin is. And then he just looked at me and said, oh, you're not, you're not as smart as I thought you are. At that time, I just went home, started doing my research, fell in love with the concept of decentralization. And since then, I, uh, I never got away from it. And I stayed involved in the, in the, in the ecosystems ever since. When Crypto Cobain invited me on his podcast called Up Only, which was, and I, I still think is probably the most uh, notorious crypto podcast there is. I was over the moon uh, and I felt like from that day on, I gained so much reach and kind of like my persona was created during that time. Oh, I had many, but uh, the one that I like to mention the most because it was by far the most significant one for me was I invested three digit Bitcoin into an ICO project called Mothership, which was supposed to be the Binance Bybit and whatnot competitor, they unfortunately never launched, so I lost uh, over 100 Bitcoin. That happened uh, 2017 to 2018. So I've been waiting for a long, long time for that project to, to arise like the phoenix from the ashes, but <laughs> it never did. I would say I use Uniswap the most. Uh, it's by far the most liquid decentralized exchange there is. Besides that, I use Kraken as a European fiat on-ramp and off-ramp. And the third, but not least, is obviously Bybit uh, that I really like to use. They have a lot of perpetuals, they have a lot of pairs, so good liquidity, fast customer service, 
uh, very innovative and agile. Like whenever there is something, they immediately try to adapt to the situation. Overall, just a pleasant experience with a good user interface. Bybit offered me to make a trading competition, which kind of involves uh, my whole community. And the cool thing about it is they were offering a, a prize pool for the winners. So you just had to deposit a specific amount, which was, and the, the, the downside limit of the minimum amount was pretty low. So everyone or most of my community could participate and they were sponsoring the prize money pool. So there was one guy who literally won money by doing what he's doing. The, the, the gain was just more excessive because Bybit was sponsoring it, which is probably the most fun way to interact with the community without making them force or risk more capital than they should. I would say most of the stuff you should read can be found on twitter.com. Uh, people sometimes are a little surprised by how excessive the knowledge base on twitter.com is. Every single person that I talk to or that I kind of appreciate in the crypto space, all they do is share their thoughts and opinions on Twitter. It's not in a journal, it's not in a book. All the big newspapers, they take the key data from Twitter and then make an article out of it. If you really want to be on the edge or like the newest information, verified or not, from the author himself, I think you absolutely have to have a Twitter account to really stay in the loop. If I had to like name three random people that might be a valuable addition to your Twitter following, I would say Crypto Cobain, or I think, no, now his Twitter handle is just Kobe. Kobe is uh, a, just an overall nice guy, very, very, very smart. Uh, he's been one of like the main, kind of like the founders of Crypto Twitter, very smart with good ethics, because that's very important. Most people somehow can be easily corrupted and I can I guarantee you Kobe is not one of them. Uh, when it comes to like pure technical, I can recommend Trader SZ, an extremely, extremely well-disciplined trader. And when it comes to crypto fundamentals, I would say just start reading what Vitalik Buterin has to say. He's the uh, founder of Ethereum and overall just extremely, extremely smart and has always very valuable input when it comes to smart contracts and crypto in general. To be very, very honest with you, I still hold Ethereum as the base of my portfolio and I do not see it changing anytime soon. Now with Ethereum 2.0 being deployed without too many problems, and gas fees reduction and the burn of the supply and overall just the, the functionality of Ethereum kind of going parabolic. It just makes the most sense for me. I feel uh, extremely confident holding Ethereum over the next couple of years. Also, and specifically for beginners, if you want to st start to understand the possibilities of smart contracts and crypto in general, you should really dig into what Ethereum is today, what it was and when it can be in the next couple three to five years. I mean, the FTX situation right now is an extremely unfortunate situation. It just kind of proves again that we really have to focus on making projects and companies really decentralized. We cannot let human beings control a significant amount of some kind of market share. It doesn't matter in what field it is. It doesn't matter if it's a centralized exchange. It doesn't matter if it's a cold wallet company. It does not matter. History has proven it a million times. If you give a human being too much power, they will become greedy, corrupted. Uh, I think the takeaway is extremely well for centralized exchanges because now they have to always kind of uh, have a proof of funds ready in order for to get, regain the trust of their customers. But yeah, overall, I think it's just a blip on the chart after all. I don't think that this is gonna destroy the crypto market per se now. It hurt the market and the prices obviously, but we had many, many other incidences like these and we overcame all of them. So I'm pretty confident we're gonna overcome this one too. So yeah, again, my Twitter handle is Trading Lord. So if you wanna have like a fun mixture of, you know, not too dry, pure technical content, but also some valuable stuff, you should definitely follow me.